In my Radiant Half Bridge video, I briefly showed you the isolated gate driver PCB board that forms the beating heart of the Radiant circuit. But I didn't show you the details of how it came to be and what parts I used for it. Although in the description of the Radiant Half Bridge video, there are links to all that is needed to build it yourself. First, I will show you the failures that led to the successful creation of the Radiant half Bridge circuit. Then, I'll show you the gate driver PCB up close while talking about the parts that I used for it. You might have seen my H-Bridge preview this circuit. And this is one of the many failures I have made in the past uh, one and a half years. Uh, but failures are just lessons to be learned and I learned a lot from all these circuits that I've produced. And I just wanted to show you a few of them. So the H-Bridge, which couldn't produce any impulses because it had no ground. Uh, let's see, here's also one of the classics. This is uh, the first circuit, but I made a complementary circuit to it, the radiant power circuit, but then uh, mirrored with positive impulses and a negative DC offset. And these two work together with five coils. I learned that uh, to be efficient, those two, those five coils all needed to be in phase and a lot more. This also didn't really work. It did work, but didn't give the results. Another uh, gate driver, isolated gate driver circuit. But this one is uh, to be used modular. So I could use this with different modules for the DC offset and a module for the power supply, the capacitors of the power supply and, and so on. This was a good step forward. Working modular was a very good decision and I still do it. This is uh, a good step forward. Uh, what I used here was two isolated gate driver boards. And these, these were the first version of my radiant half pitch circuit. But what I did wrong here was put the, the diodes that blocked the impulses on the wrong side of the uh, MOSFET, which overheated the diodes and they, they broke down. I had tremendous energy losses in the imp impulses. So again, it worked, uh, but not as supposed to, and I learned from it. I let it go for a while. This is another low side bridge. I also uh, investigated the differences between the low side and the high side switch. And I came to the conclusion that uh, both the ho uh, low side and the high side switch circuit uh, produce the same effects. There was no difference at all. And therefore I concluded, okay, I need to go with the half pitch circuits, which produces both polarity impulses. Then I went a step further. Let's see. Then I went on to this version, which all, uh, is still two separate plates, but I joined them together because I wanted to have a very short uh, path for the coils to connect to the MOSFETs. This was still based on a 1200 volt MOSFET, but the diodes could only block to a thousand volts. And this was tricky because when I put uh, more than a thousand volt impulses through them, uh, the diodes would blow up. So I learned from this that I needed 900 volt MOSFETs with avalanche mode body diodes, which would limit the impulses to 900 volts. So the diodes that could handle a thousand volts would be protected by the MOSFET body diodes. So that was one of the final versions. Here is another one that was uh, almost the same, but with a new circuit board. This circuit board is exactly, uh, it's just one board and all the parts are on it. It's really tight and neat. I really like this uh, design. I, I like the blue color of the board and everything is neat and tidy and uh, yeah, 
but this still had the 1200 volts uh, impulses. After this, I came to the conclusion that uh, the design that I made used MOSFETs that had a 20 volt gate voltage. And the new 900 volt MOSFETs, they are a different version. And the old version of the 20 volt gate wasn't available anymore. So now I had to work with 15 volt gate MOSFETs. And this demanded a different uh, isolated uh, DC to DC converter. Those black things you see here provide the isolated DC for the gate driver and the uh, gate of the MOSFET. But these provide 20 volts and I needed 15 volts. To, so I, I needed to redesign it again. And that is why research takes so uh, much of time. Because uh, you, you, you haven't thought of everything and you need to learn from it. And I have learned enough now that I have a working circuit that is efficient, that works. And now I will show you that circuit. So you just saw all my failures, which are not failures at all, but lessons to be learned. And I learned from them. Now I wanted to show you my PCB up close. Because I'm really proud of this product. I spent a lot of time refining it and getting it to the state it is in right now. And probably it will be even more refined in the near future. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, show you this because I'm really proud of it. And uh, <laughs> this backside, this is a little uh, mistake I made. Actually, it's a solution for a mistake, because I started using these parts and I wanted to have them on top, as I defined them here and here. But they were mirrored, because the data sheet didn't give me the right information. It wasn't very clear, maybe I should have read it better, but it's now on the bottom. These are what substitutes my batteries. I wanted to get rid of the batteries for driving the gate of the MOSFETs. And uh, I used batteries because they needed to be isolated because I'm switching high and low and it uh, needs to be isolated to work properly. I ended up with these 1 watt uh, isolated DC to DC converters uh, which do the job very well. Because here is the gate driver I see, number one and number two. I can get them out really easily, which is nice. It's not really necessary, but by having it like this, yes, it focuses. Uh, this is a very small SMD uh, isolated gate driver I see, and I have a little, very small PCB board. Uh, that it is soldered on and that board has then attached to it the pins and these pins are through hole pins so that's standard regular uh, what fits on the on the PCB board then I've here some uh, here's the socket so here's the socket where it fits into and that's a, a dip 8 so, uh, through hole so I just have these small PC boards, PCB boards, which are fitting right into it, and they they're precision sockets, so they perfectly fit in. And yeah, that took me a while to get it right. And of course, we have the fans on the MOSFETs, and uh, the MOSFETs are just upright. In between here you see the connections for the L1 and L2 coils which are switched by the high side MOSFET and the low side MOSFET. Here you have the DC positive voltage and DC negative voltage from the power supply. So this is the uh, the blue cable comes from a power uh, supply which is uh, external. This is the positive and the negative. And the power supply is grounded in the middle. Now I've put here another ground which is earth ground. 
I always use uh, the water pipes because we've got copper wa water pipes that are in the ground and it provides a very good earth ground. So I put it here again to get a good balanced uh, way. And that's here also, so the coils cr uh, connect directly to earth ground and then the capacitors are here. I've got two in parallel and then those are in series. So you get the positive, zero, negative DC voltage. And then here it goes into the board and here the positive goes into the board. And it all uh, works very nice. As you can see uh, I've used uh, BNC connectors for the uh, dual channel uh, signal generator that creates the square waves. These are the cooling fa uh, fins for the for the diodes. The diodes are underneath them. These need cooling because they they, they switch really fast. They, they provide the DC power to the circuit but at the same time they need to block the impulses. And the impulses uh, when I turn up uh, the settings really high, they, they can be very, very, very in, uh, energetic. Because when you have a, a 900 volt impulse, which is the maximum for this circuit, or a negative 900 uh, volt impulse, which comes from the same coil, and you have that at uh, around 400 nanoseconds, then you have very high amperage in that impulse. And that diode needs to be able to block it, so it needs to be cooled. And uh, the MOSFETs also, they, they are power MOSFETs, so they don't really need to have a lot of cooling. But the problem lies in that the impulses travel through the body diode of the MOSFET. So they heat up and uh, they need to be cooled. So I've got two 12 volt fans and they just run to the 12 volt input. This is the 12 volt input for the front side of the circuit and uh, that's just by uh, external uh, 12 volt power supply. So 12 volts come in here, it is going to the fans and it's going to the capacitors of the isolated DC to DC converters which powers the gate side of the IC because this gate driver IC has a dual power supply. It has, on the input side, where the coax signal generator comes in, it is provided with 5 volts, which is stepped down from 12 to 5 by this little uh, voltage regulator. And then the isolated side is provided by positive 15 and minus 5 volts. And this way the, the MOSFETs can switch really fast on and off. And turning off of the MOSFET needs to be really fast because this is what creates the impulse. The faster we turn it off, the better it is. Little uh, LEDs so I know I have uh, voltage on it, just to be sure. It's just always, always nice. And uh, yeah, that is all the connections that are here. Somebody, somebody asked me, is this the L2 coil? Yeah, now it's focused. You can see there is an... oops. Uh, L2 coil there. Of course that is not the L2 coil which I use to create series resonance. It is the L2 coil on the PCB which filters the power supply, the isolated DC to DC converter. It is just filtering that input. And how do you design something like this? Well, one side it's trial and error, but the other side but mostly it is just reading the data sheets. At a certain point you know what types of MOSFETs you need, what types of uh, diodes you need, and these MOSFETs have data sheets, which give uh, a lot of good information about what voltages they need to switch on and off, and then you, you know what kind of isolated DC uh, driver you need, and I made measurements uh, and I concluded that one watt was more than enough because they hardly use any power with these relatively uh, low frequencies. Here you see all the capacitors are used and these are for the discharging and the charging of the gate of one MOSFET and here's the same pair the discharging and the charging of the gate of the other MOSFET. And I use a lot of capacitors and that is 
on one side to filter it to make it stable DC because the these frequencies are very high in switching um, but other sides also to be able to provide the fast currents needed to turn the gate on and off very fast there's one uh, electrolytic capacitor that's the main buffer but that isn't fast enough so I have a uh, a polypropylene uh, capacitor here which is really fast and then I have another ceramic multi-layer capacitor there and I even have another uh, 100 uh, nanofarad capacitor which connects the positive 15 and negative 5 volts so it stabilizes it even more and it's a little bit too much probably but it's it's uh, better to be uh, proper than not proper because if those gate voltages start oscillating and ringing uh, they uh, can rise above the gate voltage maximums and destroy the MOSFET that's not so nice because then you have to desolder the MOSFET make a new uh, cooling body and I had that already once because I uh, was a little bit uh <laughs> testing it out put a lot of power through it and it uh, it blew out you can see it here I didn't I didn't snap off the uh, the MOSFET foots the leads so I can do that now because I don't need them snap it all right yeah so yeah I'm, r I'm really proud of, of this I, I, I had many experiments uh, trying to get rid of the the battery and um, uh, the first I started even before the age bridge experiment and that worked but I used uh, Chinese isolated DC to DC converters and uh, they melted and I th they weren't trustworthy so I thought okay let's give it another try and then I had the wrong voltage uh, MOSFETs because the MOSFET voltage needs to be lower than the diode else you risk blowing up the diodes really fast so then I uh, came to the conclusion that I needed a thousand volt diode with a 900 volt uh, MOSFET because the body diode of the MOSFET goes into avalanche mode when it is over the maximum voltage so at that 900 volts it is starting to be protected now you, you can't go too wild with it but you can make small mistakes you can push it a little bit and then you see that the 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 peak of the impulse starts to be clipped off and then you know okay I reached my maximum so that's really nice and that's that that's that makes it possible to play with it a little bit and actually by the setup that I'm using now I don't really have 900 volts uh, impulses and uh, I like to st keep it safe so below the 800 volt or 750 volt maximum just to be safe and it, it works uh, I get it I'm getting the results as you have seen in my previous videos probably and I'll s check them out because <laughs> this circuit is really capable of doing some magic uh, at least magic in the sense that I don't fully understand why uh, the strange uh, effects occur like phase shifting and current amplification and it's uh, really mysterious to me and I like that because then you can learn from it so yeah I wanted to show you this all because I'm very proud of, of what I achieved with this uh, PCB and you can find this PCB in the description of the video of the Radiant Half Bridge circuit. There's a link and you can order it yourself if you want to build it yourself. There's a bill of material and there's a lot more information on my website also. The, um, the parts that I used and uh, the data sheets are there. As said, I'm sharing it with you all and it takes time to do research. So sometimes <laughs> uh, you won't hear a lot of me but that doesn't mean that I'm not there it just takes time okay I'm starting to ramble I'm gonna quit uh, I showed you the circuit and that's what I wanted uh, you to see this work is all 
open source, meaning that I will share all the information that I gain with the community that is interested. You can fund this open source research by giving a donation on my PayPal account that is listed below in the description of the video. If you have questions, you can do so in the comment section below. Please subscribe, like and share this video and turn on notifications if you want to get a personal call when my next video is out. Thank you for watching and good luck on your rebuild of this circuit and its rather unique effects. See you next time.